Tuna Plugging Guy. I'm Captain Andy Lacasio from Northeast Angling, and I'm going to show you how to catch big yellowfin tuna on popping plugs. And we're here inside Chris Ball fishing on the Vertigo 2, Sportfish Galapagos. Pete Santini is our guy. We went to an amazing yellowfin bite, 50 to 100 pound class fish, all on big Yozuri sashimi bowl poppers. This is wild action. We'll try and hook one up in just a moment. They're sneaking up on the fish. We're gonna make a big throw once we get in rain. We've been coming to Galapagos for the past 10 years because it's a proving ground for our gear and our techniques on catching the big elephant. And 10 years ago, we didn't really have the tackle that's involved the wheel and line technology that we have today. And it's made a big difference, and I'm gonna show you some of the reasons. To start off with, I've got a five and a half or six foot rod. This rod's typically used for butterfly jigs, and it's a spinning rod, so it's got a lot of beat to it, and it's rated for 80 to 130 pounds. And then we go with the reel, this particular reel, this is from Penn, it's a Penn Torque. This reel has good line capacity, we've loaded it with 65 pound Berkeley braid. It's gonna give us a lot of casting distance and a lot of line capacity. And now we get to the important part. To finish off our terminal tackle, we tied a very short bimini twist and we locked that into a swivel. Now, there are two ways to do this. When we have the swivel, we can actually just put the swivel here or put a bead in front of it so the angler doesn't reel, reel the swivel into the tip and down into the tip. Or you can use a uni knot. We really like the swivel because it lets us easily make new connections when our leaders get damaged without having to reach higher. Then we've got a two to three foot length of 80 pound fluorocarbon. This is also from Missouri. It's disappearing pink. And finally, a naked snap so we can easily make attachments and switch our plugs. And now we come down to the plug. This specific one is a sashimi bowl from Missouri. It's a great plug out of the package. We've actually made a slight upgrade to it. We've added some mustad, 4X strong hooks to it because the fish are so big and we're going to be using so much drag pressure. Any popper is going to work, but Choosing the right popper may make the difference between catching 5 fish in a day and 15 fish in a day. say you might be better off throwing a jig because you're going to get more casting distance. The only problem is jigs need to be retrieved fairly quickly to be effective. Worse, they sink down in the water column and all the fish are looking at the, at the surface. So what we found is that poppers are a lot more effective. And the key to choosing the right popper is very simple. Just choose the biggest popper that you can cast effectively that doesn't overwhelm your attack. So in fact, there are very few cases where a popper is too big. It's only too big if you can't cast it. And the beauty of these poppers is you're going to throw them as far as you can, get as much casting distance as, po as possible, and then get a nice steady retrieve in. You don't have to whip it through the water, you want a lot of splash, and you want to keep it in the hip zone where the fish are as long as possible. Many times, if you drop your popper in the right spot, you're going to pop it just one time, the fish is going to be on it. One motto: Go heavy or go home. Fish that we fish for here are 50, 100 pounds, 150. Most are in the 50 to 100 pound class, and light tackle just isn't going to work. Yeah, you're going to get better casting distance. You're probably going to hook more fish, but you're going to lose a lot more fish. The fish are going to go straight down. You know, a lot of other things that can come and get them while they're down there, like sharks and sea lions. So you want to make sure that your tackle is at least rated so it can handle 50 and 60 pound lines. 80 pound lines very, very well, or you're just not going to bring any fish to the boat. 
you can end up feeding your lures to the sharks and sea lions. Get it to the boat sooner, and since you're going to really want to release a lot of fish, that fish has a much better chance if you get it there quickly. I got my wife the Black Magic Fighting Belt. It's probably the easiest one to use. It's got a very deep slot in it, and basically just work it into it's in the pen, and I can put enormous pressure on the fish. And one thing about tuna, they tend to fight straight up and down. That means you're going to be doing a lot of straight up and down lifting. It's going to save your arms, it's going to save your upper body, and you can use all your legs just to rock those fish you're not always going to be fishing on a boat that has an open down. That means you might be cast from the back of a boat, maybe even the back of a big sport fishing, which means that there's outriggers and a lot of things in the way. One of the things we like to do is when we're looking for the tuna, we might troll four lines and have the outriggers up. We might have the outriggers down on one side. And if fish, we see fish coming up and they're not staying up for long, we're probably just going to keep trolling to slip the boat into them quietly. And if we get a shot, we get a shot. If not, at least we can troll some lures through them. However, what we found with the big yellowfin is they typically do not like troll lures. They really want popping clubs. They are focused on what's happening on the surface. Now, one of the things that's important for the angler to know is how the captain is going to move the boat. And there needs to be some communication between the two. The angler needs to tell that captain, well, this is my strong side. And the captain needs to pay attention to which way the wind's blowing. You don't want the angler making a cast to beam the boat and throwing the lure into the wind. So the captain needs to position the boat accordingly. So hopefully with the wind on the side that the angler is going to be casting on, going away from the boat, giving him the most distance. And the angler, when he makes a cast from the cockpit, is going to need to throw on his forehand or his backhand at about a 45 degree angle ahead of the boat because the boat's still going to be sliding. This takes a little practice at first. Once you get good at it, you'll have a very good feel for when to make that cast. The important thing to remember is that yellowfin tuna move very, very fast. The captain needs to judge where they're going to be next and what direction they're moving at any given moment. And as the angler, you need to see that last flash and say, okay, the next spot to cast is going to be over here. fish well before they start growing on top. One of the things we always look for is two or three birds starting to mill about, more birds joining them. We're watching other birds around the boat and seeing what direction they're going in. They're going to give you a good indi indication of where the action is going to happen next. And one of the other important things is as you come up on school, you can watch the birds. They will show you the direction that, that school is going. And as the birds get thicker and thicker and start working closer and closer to the surface, you know that that's about where the fish are going to pop up. Perfect ending. Bird. 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 The bird's not helping. Still bird. Still bird. Still bird. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, get that this tuna. Oh, fish on! Great footage. Right. Yeah, I got all of it. <laughs> bird. No fish. No bird. So a bird. Boots and cats. Grab my line in the air. Eventually, the lure came down in the water. And dropped it in front of it. Now I'm going to put my substitute angler on this fish. Just the reason we're able to put all this great information together is that every year we travel to San Cristobal and the Galapagos Islands and fish with Pete Santini on Vertigo 2. And we get as much yellowfin fishing as we could possibly want. We also have wahoo, marlin, and a lot of other things going on. But for yellowfin and learning and really perfecting your techniques, there's no better place than this. 
I'm Andrew Acasio, and you've been watching The Elephant in the Bloody Eye. To learn more, visit our website at neangling.com. Tight lines.